Done another exam question walkthrough for A-level chemistry. So this is number 10 in the Enthalpy Changes playlist. Question suitable for all of the major exam boards. And I really hope you like the video. And if you haven't already subscribed, I'd love you to do so. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so make a start. So first thing I'm going to do is write this equation for the complete combustion of heptane. So heptane is C7H16. We're going to that with O2. And we're making carbon dioxide and water when we do complete combustion. So balancing it, we need seven CO2s. We need eight H2Os. And then we'll finish off with the oxygens. So on the right, we've got seven twos, 14 plus eight, 22. So we need 11 O2s. Moving on to the next part, so we've got to draw the enthalpy profile diagram for this reaction here. Um, you can see I've highlighted the enthalpy change. It's minus 746, so that means it's an exothermic reaction. So our reactants need to be higher in enthalpy than our products. So a full formula of the reactants on this line, full formula of the products on this line, and then the delta H is a downwards arrow because it's exothermic from reactants to products and the activation energy Ea is an upwards arrow from the reactant to the peak of the curve there. Next thing I'm going to do is explain the role of the catalyst so we just need to say something like this it increases the rate of reaction by providing an alternative route with lower activation energy. Moving on to part B, so the standard temperature is 298 Kelvin or 25 degrees C and standard pressure is either 100 kilopascals, you could say 101 kilopascals or you could say one atmosphere. And finishing off with the calculation, so I'm going to do this using an enthalpy cycle rather than the sort of, sort of shortcut way of doing it. Um, so there's the equation that we've been given at the top of the question there. The enthalpy change, we're told, was minus 25 kilojoules per mole. And because we've got enthalpy changes of formation, I'm going to draw what I call a formation cycle. So all the elements involved in the species in the equation, I'm putting in this box down here. So what I need to do is create a cycle by drawing an arrow this way. And what that arrow represents are the enthalpy changes of formation of one mole of iron three oxide and three moles of CO, which you can see you've got in the table there. So minus 824 kilojoules per mole to form one mole of Fe2O3 from its elements, obviously, and three times minus 111 to form three moles of carbon monoxide from its elements from the box here. And then on the other side, we need this arrow here to represent the enthalpy change of formation of those three moles of carbon dioxide, which I'm just labeling up as 3x because that's what we've got to calculate. There's no value for the iron because it's an element. Enthalpy changes of formation of all elements is zero. So now if we think about Hess's law, so we've got two ways, two routes to go from here to here. We've got this pink route, which includes these enthalpy changes and this one. And we've got this blue route to go directly from here to here. And obviously, Hess's law says it doesn't matter which way you go, so long as you start and finish at the same place. So the pink route, the sum of the enthalpy changes in the pink route is equal to the enthalpy change of the blue route. So we'll put the numbers in, we get this here. So I'll just tidy this bit up which gives us 3x is equal to minus 1182. So I just need to divide that by 3 to get my enthalpy change of formation for the carbon dioxide, which comes out at minus 394 kilojoules per mole. 